Hey there, YouTube, and if you're listening on the podcast, Joshua Washington here, and I have a question for you. What if that job that you hate is exactly, exactly the thing that will make you rich, that will eventually take you from, I hate this, to a rich life? What if? Now, before you hit the exit button and you think, man, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no way that this job, you mean this job? (laughs) Yeah, I mean that job, the one that you hate. And I understand the impact of a job that you hate can can leave us. I've been there myself. It leaves you feeling like you're draining your, your health, like you're draining your energy and ultimately draining your life. Like that's how it feels when you're working a job that you hate. That's the impact that a job that we hate can have on us. But I, I pose the question and I want to submit this question to you. Is it the job? Like, is it draining your life, health and energy? Or, or is it really causing you to develop? Now, before I go any further, I want to give a caveat here. I am not referring to the abusive job. Like if you're in a job and and your boss is filling up on you and harassing you every day, it's time to go. Okay. (laughs) We're not referring to those kind of jobs. Like it's it's time to get out, move on. I'm not talking about that kind of job you hate, but I'm talking about the one that, that when you think about, or you're at work, you just feels like it's draining the life out of you, straining the energy out of you. And the question I ask is, is it really? Is it draining you or is it actually the thing that is building you up? And an example I'll use, right? I have a two year old. And so I remember the other day we were running around the house and (laughs) I got to admit, during that time, when we were running around the house, it felt like my life Health and energy was being drained out of me because I was so darn tired because I'm out of shape. The same thing when we go to the gym. For those of you who have gone to the gym and maybe you're getting back into the swing of things. When you get into that gym, some days it feels like your life, health and energy is being drained out because that's exactly what's happening. You're you're lifting weight and you're pushing your muscles to the point of exhaustion, to the point of failure. And isn't it funny that we can get those two things mixed up sometimes when it comes to, is this job helping me or is it actually harming me? So here's something I want you to think about. Isn't it funny or interesting rather, not funny. Isn't it interesting that it seems like every person who you would consider successful or have reached a high level of success all seem to have the same kind of thing in common when it comes to their success. All of those stories of success stories we see of the celebrities or or the uh, famous professionals, it all seems to have a similar kind of theme in there. And you know what that, you know what they all have in common? Adversity. They all have adversity in common. And and I want to show you something here. I call this the adversity curve. Like, here's what we see. And you see this in movies. You see this, like, this is a recurring storyline that we see everywhere, everywhere around us if we really open our eyes and look. And here's how it goes. It goes with, okay, we get the start, right? We have, here's the starting point. You start that job. You start the journey towards accomplishing a goal. Doesn't matter. So you have that start, right? And then what happens after a while? This. This right here happens. And I call this, this is the, what the adversity uh, curve looks like. This is the adversity curve. You start that job, you start that journey towards that goal, and you show up on that fourth week and you realize I hate it here. (laughs) I hate it here. Has anybody ever felt like that? Like I I hate it here. And, And okay, so let's keep going. But eventually what happens is if you stay in it long enough, here's what happens. 
this little thing called growth happens and your trajectory starts to go up this way. And before you know it, you're on the other side. And actually, I, this is wrong. It, the arrow wouldn't be flatlined again. What, what happens is it actually goes up and up. That's what happens. That's what the adversity curve looks like. But oftentimes, many of us, when it comes to this curve, we get stuck right here. We get stuck there. And, I, and, I, and I've seen this in my own life. There was a time in my life where I had to get up every morning and not just be up by this time. I had to be at my boss's house by 6.30 in the morning. And at that time, I had to wear like all white, like all white uh, because I was a painter. I was painting houses in rich neighborhoods, mind you. And I remember those mornings where I would get out of bed and it's like I could smell the paint. And all I could think in my mind was, I do not want to do this today. I do not. I don't want to pressure wash. I don't want to go refill the paint can. I don't want to stand there and do, you know, do the painting, <laughs> the painter's posture for a full day. And I surely don't want to be in this van with other workers. Like I, I literally hated that season. And it would have been very easy to check out. Like, like I, I, I look at that today and there's sometimes I don't even wear, I, I've never worn all white since I had that job. <laughs> I have not worn all white since I left that job. I think, I think it's a, a unconscious uh, <laughs> trauma that I had. In fact, my wife called me today and she was, we were FaceTiming and she was like, Hey, I seen this white, uh, like jacket that, that, uh, I think you look at it. Cause she's never seen me in white. She's never seen me in all white. We've been together for 10 years. And I think it has something to do with that job, but, but no, I'm joking. I'm joking. But the point is I didn't quit that job and it actually really helped me because it built up enough experience that when I moved on from that, I knew I'm going to work as hard as I can to never be in that position again, because I had no choice at that time. I had to work that job. And it was hard labor, but because I didn't check out, I stayed in there and kept getting up every morning, driving my little 96 beat up Honda Accord and smelling like paint, smelling paint in my sleep. When I left that job, I was so laser focused on doing whatever it took to grow to that level, to, to have the life and to live the life that I could see in my vision, but didn't match my now. And some of you, you're in a job that you hate, and the reason why you hate it is because it does not match what you see with your vision. It does not match what you thought your life would look like by this point. But can I encourage you to be mindful of the curve? And I'm showing this here on the screen because I want you to see where you may be on this curve. There's no telling how long we'd be in that adversity, that season of adversity. But can I encourage you, do not forfeit. Do not check out too early because... That job that you're quitting, quitting that job you hate might be the biggest mistake for you because there's nothing like pain that causes us to move. Pain can be a great motivator. I would not recommend it for extended periods of time, but pain, it puts us in a position to make a decision. And because I had to get up every morning and go paint those houses and see how nice these houses look, I'm out in Heathrow, one of the richest you know, communities, Because I had to experience that, there was enough pain in there to say, you know what? No, 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 no. What does it take? What do I need to do? What do I need to learn to make sure I am not spending the rest of my life doing this? I'm telling you, quitting that job, that job you hate, might be the biggest mistake. So do not check out of the adverse, that adversity curve in your life. Do not check out. And here's why this is important. I'm going to give you enough, another example, but I want to read something to you. Actually, it's two things I, I want to read to you. There's an old proverb that actually sparked this, this thought for today. Um, and it's in uh, Proverbs 12. And it says, actually, I'm going to just read it to you. Let me find it. I want to read it to you. Let me do that. 
I want to read this to you because I want you to, <laughs> it's one of my favorite Proverbs because it, it punches you in the face, right? It says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof, correction, is stupid. <laughs> now, I'm not calling you stupid. That's what the proverb says. It says when we hate that discipline that takes place only in the, the curve of adversity. When we, when we learn to hate that, we actually miss out. And I also love this other one because here's why this is important. There's another verse that says in Hebrews, it says, for the moment, for in the moment, all discipline seems painful. Or I think the, the New King says all chastisement feels painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Trained by what? Discipline. In the moment, when you're here in this, in this uh, adversity curve, it sucks. Like the land, this, this is the land of sucky. Like <laughs> it sucks when you're there. But what this tells us is that knowing the principle and no understanding the, the importance of not quitting, uh, of how this might actually be a catalyst to, to my success, this shows us that when we stay in it, we get to the, the end, we get out of that curve and we start to, what's the word I'm looking for? We start to rise to the fruit. We start to elevate and our lives begin to look different. I joked about never wearing white again since that moment, but I also, I'm going to tell you honestly, my life has never looked like that again because it's still wired up here. And so that job you hate, maybe it's creating an experience, a pain that will, will sip so deep in your mind that you will grow into the person and grow into the success that your life was meant for. Because like, I love, I love what this verse says in the moment, it all seems unpleasant, but there's fruit on the other side of that adversity. There's fruit on the other side of, of that pain. There's fruit on the other side of that, you know, waking up in the morning and the, I hate this job attitude. And, and here's a, one last story. I'll tell you before we, we get out. I was working in a, in a pre, my previous job and I was beginning to see like that career trajectory of just kind of taking off. And at the time I was, I was doing a, uh, a job within in my role that was beyond what I was getting paid. And I knew it. I knew, man, if I could go out on my own and get paid a lot more for this, for this work. And I'll never forget, I went and I sat down with my, my CPA at that time. And I was just telling him, I was saying, hey man, I am thinking about leaving this job because I know I can get paid this much. I know I can get paid so much more. And I didn't hate the job at the time. So it wasn't even like a, oh, I hate this job. It was just, I saw a better opportunity and I, I could see some adversity in there. The adversity of wanting, you know, what I could see in my vision, but it wasn't present. I felt like I, and then I started telling myself, man, they don't value you here. They don't, they don't, they don't value your skill set. That's, that, that's what happens. We start to tell ourselves these narratives when we're in that, that adversity valley. But I had a friend, thankfully, a wise friend that sat me down and said, hey, Josh, just stay in there a little bit longer. And he said two years. I'm like, two years? Stay there a little bit longer. And can I tell you, that was the best decision? Because what happened was, because I stayed there, I grew more. I got more experience. What I thought, you know, could be great if I left became even greater. And I became more clear that what my next step should be. So much so that when I was getting ready to leave, a better opportunity came and I knew and that's not it. That's not for me. Why? Because I stayed in it long enough. And I'm telling you, there are areas in your life right now that you need to stay in it. You need to uh, pull up your sleeves and stay in it and ask yourself, instead of I hate this job, I hate this job, start asking yourself, what can I learn from this job?
how can I grow from this job? How can I make sure that I never end up in a job like this again? Not out of desperation, but out of vision. What do I see for my life? Where am I at now? What are the skills that are in between that? What are the strengths that are in between that? What do I need to be doing on my daily to make sure I begin to grow from this moment? And I promise you, I promise you, if you do that, and then on top of that, you stay connected with people like my CPA, whoever that CPA or person is in your life, that will remind you, hey, stay in it, which um, that's why I'm glad you showed up here on this YouTube channel, because I'm going to remind you to stay in it. If you do those two things with your perspective, your mentality, and then having the, the, the safeguards around you to help keep you focused, if you do those, just those two things alone, I know that that job that you hate will eventually become exactly the thing that will make you great. All right, that's all for this week. I hope you found this to be valuable. I hope you found this to be something that you can, you know, apply to your life. And I asked you that question. What did you find most useful from this time today? All right, hope you will answer that. And then other than that, I'll see you next week at the same time, same place, reminding you that success is your destiny. I'll see you on the next one.